Janine Thorne, you better get your behind in this house. The street lights are coming on. <laughs> the pen may be mightier than the sword, but the voice, <laughs> the voice has its own vibrant power. When I think of voices that I love and find memorable, I think of my grandmother, Eva. I think of my pop singing his special version of Happy Birthday, of Jesse Norman and Kathleen Battle soaring the heights of sound together, of my husband or daughter saying, I love you. I love you, Mama. Those are voices that heal and soothe me, that remind me of the greatness of God's creation and of my tiny place in the middle of that greatness. For the ancient Hebrews, who are the subject of today's psalm, it is no ordinary voice that is described as powerful and majestic, as thunderous and glorious. It is the voice of the Lord. And this voice comes forth as flames flashing that shake the wilderness and whirls the trees. This voice reminds us of God's greatness and of our tiny place in the middle of that greatness. You might remember a commercial from the 1970s in which Ella Fitzgerald's voice shatters a wine glass. Was it real or was it Memorex? <laughs> <laughs> the first lady of song had a voice, a voice so powerful it shattered glass. And Ella is helpful to us this morning in this way. Her voice, her words were like objects. They shattered glass. Her sung words were not just sound waves, but something concrete that connected with something else concrete and shattered it. The Hebrew people had a sort of Ella Fitzgerald understanding of words. Words were not just sound waves, but something concrete. Words connected with other objects and shattered their reality often quite spectacularly. In addition to being concrete in the Hebrew world view, words were also dynamic. They were a force that had the power to stimulate change. Words were events, happenings, occurrences. They were memorable and potentially extraordinary. For the Hebrew people, words had substance. Words changed existence. As children, how many of you were taught the annoyingly sing-song phrase, join me if you know it, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I suppose that ditty helped us through some challenging situations with difficult people. But on closer reflection, we all know it's not true. <laughs> Even now, some of us are working out the pain of those words that were not supposed to harm us, but did. Even now, many of us are trying to eject tapes that are on automatic replay in our heads about who we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to believe, who we're supposed to love. Words have hurt us and continue to hurt us. But scripture attests to the fact that words, specifically words spoken by the voice of the Lord, can radically shatter our reality. In Genesis, God calls forth creation with a word. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Moses had a brother named Aaron. 
Aaron and his sons were the first priests, and God gave them words with which to bless the Israelites. And we hear that blessing called the Aaronic benediction nearly every Sunday. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The voice of the Lord shattering our reality. The voice of the Lord from God to Aaron to us. And I see your faces when I speak that blessing at the close of worship. And there is glory and power and majesty flashing forth like flames of fire from your faces. The voice of the Lord does change us. On a side note, the voice of the Lord need not thunder. It can come quietly or silently as it did to Elijah, as a still, small voice. And the voice of the Lord can also be seen and felt. So notice also the voice of the Lord in what you see and in what you feel. This Sunday, however, as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, the voice of the Lord on the banks of the Jordan River is theatrical, and I imagine loud. The heavens open. The Spirit of God in bodily form descends as a dove upon Jesus. You can see it up there, way up there. And God speaks. Pun intended, it was a splashy affair, as it should have been. Then for Jesus and now for us, marking the beginning of Jesus' public ministry and our public promise to live as faithful servants of Christ until the end of our life. Remember your baptism. Remember your promise. On the banks of the Jordan River, the voice of the Lord intones that which I believe all God's children want to hear. You are my child, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. God speaks. And when those concrete words connect with our concrete reality, reality shatters. We are named and claimed and publicly declared pleasing. Nothing else matters. Not the family we came from, the school we attended, the mistakes we've made, or the successes we have achieved. We are God's own, beloved and pleasing. Reality forever shattered and forever shattering. Because with each new day, we wake up to the freshness of being beloved and pleasing. Where else in our life do we get that deal? At work? (laughs) At school? At home? No. In the waters of baptism, God promises to refresh and renew us daily. Beloved and pleasing is our reality every day. That is good news. The voice of the Lord promises us strength and promises to bless us with peace. Listen, look, and feel for the voice of the Lord in your life. It will shatter everything you thought you knew about yourself and your relationship with God. You are my child, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. You are my child. 
double love it. With you I am well pleased. You are my child, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. You are my child, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. To God be the glory. Amen.